My PhD research focuses on a business model which is called industrial symbiosis. This is a synergy between companies or among more companies when a company uses waste or byproduct material from another company as a production input. What makes it really special that I'm researching this in sub-Saharan Africa in three countries, Uganda, Ghana and Mauritius. So I spend a lot of time in Africa. I travel quite a lot. This makes the project expensive, time-consuming and challenging. But from the university and from other sources with your PhD status, you can gain additional support. You can apply for scholarships, apply for field research support, Campus Mundi. You can also go to a lot of conferences, meet other colleagues, share your data, share your studies and get some feedback. Fashion is the most immediate and in Fashion is the most immediate and intimate form of self-expression. Unfortunately, sometimes behind those cute new tops and bright new dresses lurk some ugly and damaging truths. Beneath the surface, cheap mass-produced stuff is terrible for people, animals, and the planet. That is why I decided to embark on the sustainable fashion journey and create valuable knowledge for academia and industry. I seek to investigate the communication strategies of fashion businesses and to understand what messages will make people stop and consider before buying a piece of clothing. Hello everyone, my name is Yuling Wei, I'm from China. My research topic is about facial enhancement technology. I'm studying at Doctor School of Business and Management. Well, facial filters have taken over most of the social media channels, but as they use only for entertainment, let's find out. Facial enhancement technology, or FAT, allows users to change how they look in virtual world. But since COVID-19 pandemic, it has entered other phases of our life, for example, cosmetics. With my dissertation, I'm investigating the role of fat applications in the industry and the change they bring to the production and service of it. The current account balance is an abstruse economic concept. The anatomy of current account adjustments is mind-blogging. My dissertation brings a few things to light. How do we know the current account balance is on a sustainable path? I propose an approach that allows us to quantify the uncertainty surrounding the future values of the current account balance. By using a probability density forecast, we made our model innovative, just like Covenant's doctoral programs are. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I just need to share my presentation before I can get started. Thank you very much. Uh, let me welcome all of you who are here today uh, virtually with us. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for us to tell you a little bit about Corvinus doctoral programs and also uh, for you to ask questions uh, that are interest uh, for you during the application process. So um, let me just... Um, tell you a few things about uh, PhD at Corvinus University. So first of all, why do you need a PhD? Um, the main reason people want to get a PhD is because they consider an academic research career. Um, so that would be uh, most people actually, but there are some alternative reasons why you may want to get a PhD from Corvinus. Um,
Most? Most hallatok? Oké, okay, szó, so, uh, akkor uh, kezdjük újra. Bocsánat, voltam némitva. Oké, okay, szó, so sorry about this uh, uh, little technical issue. I was muted, uh, but hopefully now you guys can hear me. So once again, um, I just had this slide about why you need an academic, why you need a PhD. Let me not repeat what you can actually read on the slide. Basically, just in a nutshell, the main purpose of a PhD is to prepare you for an academic career, but there are some other alternative career, alternative career paths, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about later. So uh, this is where I was, I believe, um, telling you why uh, you might want to get a PhD. So apart from um, pursuing a research career, either at universities or research institutes, some other alternatives are, depending on your field of study, uh, policy type institutions like central banks, public administration, ministries, etc., or diplomacy. Um, international organizations are actually a, a, a great uh, job option for many people with PhDs, either from economics, uh, some business fields, or political science, uh, social sciences, IMF, World Bank, United Nations, European Union, etc. And last but not least, the private sector is also always looking for good PhDs. Uh, this could be, you know, a, a good option for people with data skills, uh, going from, uh, from um, companies like Amazon, Google, um, uh, big banks, um, you know, market research companies, media, business and economic consulting, finance, etc. So again, why PhD uh, is mostly geared toward academic careers, it also allows you to enter a bunch of other fields where knowledge and uh, research skills are appreciated. So what do you need to get a PhD? Well, you need a bunch of skills. Um, you need to have a good amount of curiosity. Uh, the best uh, research and uh, including dissertations come from topics which you really like. Okay, so when you want to write a good thesis, the first step is to find a topic that really interests you and it shows. If you do research on a topic that is your interest, it's going to drive you, it's going to uh, lead to interesting discoveries, it's going to motivate you every day to pursue your work. You have to have high standards, of course. Um, at Corvinus University, we expect students to write high-quality dissertations, which lead to internationally recognized research. So this is what we, we expect from our students. You need diligence. You basically need to work every day towards writing a good thesis. This will include, you know, just studying uh, initially and then later on uh, pursue independent research. You need to be open-minded, of course, uh, to uh, be able to absorb different uh, 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 literatures and, and uh, you know, talk to different people and in many cases go to, uh, go to uh, different countries, etc. And uh, let me just stress that ultimately you need a lot of determination. To get a PhD is a fairly long process. It takes at least four years and, and maybe a bit longer. So you need to keep yourself motivated. The uh, other traits that I just highlighted help you do that, but ultimately you need to be uh, really determined if you want to pursue this, uh, this uh, avenue. Okay, at Corvinus University, we have four doctoral schools, what you can see on the slide, the Doctoral School of Business and Management, the Doctoral School of Economics, Business and Informatics, the Doctoral School of International Relations and Political Science, the Doctoral School of Sociology and Communication Science, um, and as you can see also on the slide, these doctoral schools have different programs and in the case of doctoral school of business and management, different specializations. So you can choose uh, which particular field of study interests you within these, uh, within these broad schools. So before I finish, let me just say a few words about the program structure. Of course, you can find a lot of information at our website, but you know, uh, in a nutshell, basically the doctoral programs at Corvinus University and in fact in Hungary 
um, have two main parts. The first part is the first two years where you mostly uh, take courses and you start your research. So let's call this a uh, period of formal studies. This ends with a complex exam at the end of the second year, where you basically show that you've mastered the necessary technical skills to pursue independent research. And you also show a proposal which summarizes uh, the ideas that you want to pursue towards your thesis. You write your dissertation in the second phase of the program, which we might call a research phase, the second two years usually, but it may take a bit longer depending on how quickly you are able to, to uh, progress with your research. Um, you have an advisor that uh, already helps you in the first two years, but becomes uh, particularly important when you do your thesis work. Um, we emphasize individual research from the start, but again, the main research part is the second phase, the second two years, and we also help you with your presentation and academic writing skills. It's also possible, in fact, um, to some extent expected and encouraged to be part of uh, teaching and research activities at the university. Um, we can talk about more details later on. And this is my last slide before uh, I give the floor to others. So why would you pick Corvinus? Um, well, Corvinus is the leading uh, university in business, economics, and social sciences education within Hungary. Um, you get a PhD degree, which is recognized across the European Union. As I tried to briefly emphasize, we have uh, four doctoral schools, so you can pick, uh, uh, you know, um, many from many areas across business, economics, and social sciences. Our programs are taught in English, and our advisors are active in international research. Um, if you are a European Union citizen, then you can qualify for both a Hungarian scholarship, state scholarship, and on top of that, a select set of applicants can also receive the Corvinus Doctoral Scholarship, uh, which basically doubles, uh, actually more than doubles, um, the, uh, the state scholarship you receive. Um, in addition to that, we have other sources of funding. As I said, you have teaching and research opportunities during your studies, and there are some other scholarships you can apply to, but uh, these uh, are details which we can talk about later. So let me thank you for your attention. Again, apologies for the brief interruption at the beginning, and uh, I give the floor to the others. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this open day of the doctoral schools of Corvinus University. My name is Anila Til, and I'm going to be the host of this event for the rest of our time. Uh, you just heard Dr. Istvan Konya, who is the dean of the Corvinus doctoral schools. So thank you so much for your presentation. Now I'm going to briefly introduce you, the other members that you should be paying attention to today, uh, the representatives of our doctoral schools and everyone connected to it. Then I'm going to give you some brief overview of the admission procedure, but most of the things you can find online, but I'm going to give you a brief outline. After that, uh, all of the representatives of the doctoral schools will give some short five minute long presentations about their programs, their opportunities. And after that, we are going to have a short Q&A session. So, so if you feel like there's anything that you still would like to ask, you can put that in the comments. So please feel free to do that. And any time you feel like there's something going wrong so uh, if the sounds disappearing then please just let me know so as i mentioned you just heard dr istvan konya who is the dean of the corvinus doctoral schools but you are also going to basically meet her uh, meet uh, Juja krista horbatni who's the head of the office of the university doctoral office um, we also have with us dr daniel havran who's the representative of the doctoral school of business and management we also also have Dr. Andrea Ke, Dr. Amos Telegdi, and Dr. Peter Choka uh, representing the Doctoral School of Economics, Business, and Informatics. We also have Dr. Shandor Yulanaj, who is representing the Doctoral School of International Relations and Political Science. And we also have Dr. Zhuzhanna Elekesh, 
head of the doctoral school of sociology and communication studies. I myself am part of this uh, doctoral school as a second year communication science doctoral student. So I am just before the complex exam that we just briefly heard about. So first of all, uh, everything that is uh, essential for the application period and for the application procedure, you can find online if uh, you go to the Corvinus website and you go to the admission site. So if you feel like there's details that you still would like to know, please make sure that you check that. But some essential things that you need to know, the application period uh, opened on the 10th of March and it's going to be open for the 30th of April this year. So make sure that you uh, summarize soon your applications and you submit them if you're interested. Uh, the entire application form is online and you can also already found that on the landing page of the doctoral program. But also if you go to the individual doctoral schools, you can also find it there. So there's actually two ways to find that form. Um, another important thing is that you can only complete it once. So make sure that everything is right. You have all the attachments, you have them in PDFs. And then once you're ready, then you can just submit your application online. And if you happen to graduate uh, this year, so in academic year 2022-23, you have to remember that you will need to present your degree that you achieve um, by no later than 1st of September 2023. So this is important for you if you're, for example, a graduating master's student, you don't have your degree yet. So it's very important that you will have it at hand by the 1st of September. That's really important to to start PhD. Um, in this case, your um, admission would be conditional. So of course you can only start it if you have the degree. Um, here, you also have to make sure that uh, in the admission procedure, you upload when you probably achieve this degree. So make sure that you keep that in mind. About financing, there's three ways. Um, one is the self-finance. Uh, here, you have to pay uh, the tuition fee on your own from your own resources. This is one way to finance your studies. The second is the Hungarian um, State scholarship, we mentioned this before um, in the previous presentation. And then there's a third one, which is also the Hungarian State Scholarship and the Corvinus Doctoral Scholarship. As, as you just heard it, um, these combined basically one doubles the other one. So then you would get double the amount. So these are the three ways of, um, of doing your basically the tuition and financing your studies. But as we mentioned before, there's multiple opportunities in research and teaching where you can, where you can help the, the funding of this. All right, so another important thing that you will hear about from the presentations of the doctoral schools is that all of the doctoral schools might have a different admissions procedure. So make sure that you really pay attention to that that is really specific to you because some of them only have oral uh, admission exams. So in this case, you, you will go there, you, you will have that exam and then you will hear about the results later. But some of the schools also have a written exam, for example. So so make sure that you pay attention to these details. Um, the written exams are mostly scheduled mid-May. So that's something you have to keep in mind. And also the oral exams are probably are going to be on the first half in the first half of June. So that's also, also a date to keep in mind. And then um, the candidates will be uh, basically uh, notified by the results in the first half of July. So in this case, you would know whether you're admitted in the first half of July. And as I said, keep in mind that it's conditional if you don't have your degree yet. So by 1st of September, you need to present that. Um, we are going to move on to the to the individual presentations of the doctoral schools. So please listen carefully. And if you feel like there's more questions afterwards, just please leave them in the comments. I'm going to monitor them. And if there's any questions that the presentations don't answer, don't answer, we are going to get back to those questions. Okay? So this this was me. And now I'm going to ask the first presentation who is going to be, oh, we already see Daniel Havran. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anila, and welcome to everyone. And I also can see all of my colleagues, which is great. So here I represent uh, the Doctoral School of Business and Management uh, as a 
uh, and maybe I can, I can, yeah, I can go with the slides. So uh, let me just introduce ourselves very quickly. So we are a relatively big uh, doctoral school focusing on business administration and management. And you can see here the leadership uh, currently. Uh, uh, the forthcoming uh, head of doctoral school is Imre Ferto. He's an agricultural economist professor, and uh, he's very familiar with, with business administration issues and topics as well. And uh, with uh, Anna Maria Onodi, we are here the two study program, uh, two program directors. And uh, the most important uh, uh, colleagues are uh, Brigitta Zumpf, Monika Hermann, who are uh, uh, giving hand on many technical and administrative issues. So they are really uh, keeping everything uh, well. And uh, on the background, you may see uh, Istvan Konya, uh, uh, Zsuzsa Krista and Zsolt Rostovanyi from uh, the CDI, the doctor, Corvinus Doctoral Schools. Uh, and also one would like to mention the great contribution with the Student Doctor Association. So we are looking for uh, uh, the doctoral students uh, in many areas. And let me just uh, use the, my time to introduce quickly the specialization because here there are so many, but you can see that there are uh, uh, belonging to uh, kind of, uh, different smaller workshops, but you can see some uh, topics that can be similar or at, at the first time uh, could be difficult, uh, difficult to choose uh, one. So let me start with the management kind of uh, 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 specializations. We offer specializations in business economics and firm theories, organization and management theory, and let me say uh, strategic management. Uh, they all, you can see also the specialization leaders, which are related to the uh, entrepreneurship management, HR, organization theory uh, topics. So if you are looking for uh, a thesis supervisor from this, point then you may ask or seek uh, these professors uh, or, um, for further information. Let me introduce uh, uh, two specializations regarding to accounting and corporate finance. Then the head of the spe accounting specialization is Janusz uh, Lukács and for the corporate finance Kata Varady. And if I'm going further we can see many topics related to sustainability in a narrow sense, sustainability management, which is uh, which is operated by Maria Chutora, and in the, in the wider sense, we have agriculture economics, tourism, and business ethics and spirituality specializations, workshops, then they can support your topics uh, uh, to, to develop your topics in, to a, a great academic dissertation. Uh, we also offer operations and study, study uh, supply chain management track and behavior and decision sciences track uh, the first is offered or, or supervised by christina demeter and the second is led by agnes Wilmer. and uh, uh, those who are interested in more in marketing or communication we also offer two specializations one is for uh, lead by led by Kenneth uh, Zulfia and the other is, uh, uh, is belongs to Dora Horvat. Um, if you are, if you need, I, I can say that I can proudly say that many of interesting uh, dissertation uh, made uh, under these uh, under these topics and under these themes and uh, in the last year, we have some international successes on that. Uh, beyond uh, the publications, the international publications, some of our doctoral students were internationally recognized awards on, in different European uh, conferences. And finally, let me just uh, say a word, two words on what do we offer and what kind of students uh, do we like to see or invite to our community. Uh, this doctoral 
your school is a P offers a PhD, so it's a PhD program. Hungary, uh, there is a kind of uh, this kind of program. However, um, in the sense of the business administration, uh, the students can do or usually uh, do two way of 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 this uh, of this academic. Uh, challenge or of this track. One of that, that I can say a PhD style and uh, the other one, other way than the, uh, is uh, the DBA style um, um, of learning or of, of this, of, of, of how they make uh, the dissertation. And the PhD is the most common, it's uh, like everywhere. So if someone would like to be an academic professor with a more academic topic that they just doing the same courses, but with this focus and those students who have former worker experience and they want to go back to, uh, from business and want to go back to business and they, uh, uh, would like to focus on a uh, wider uh, sense of topic which has related to their business experience, then it is called a kind of DBA style uh, learning and dissertation making. So we support both of them and, uh, and uh, we are invite uh, these uh, students for application uh, on you know, specialization. And let me invite everyone who would like to apply in this uh, spring. And uh, uh, we are also open for discussion for those who are now just uh, uh, wondering and they would like to apply later in the future. Thank you so much. Anila, we cannot hear you. Sorry. Sorry, we could that you let me know as I just as I asked. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for the presentation. Great. Now I would like to ask uh, the representatives of the Doctoral School of Economics, Business and Informatics, Dr. Andrape and Dr. Amos Telekzi. And for everyone that is in the chat, please, uh, if you will have your questions regarding this, just, just put them in the chat box and I will monitor them. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome everybody. So actually I am Peter Chopra, the head of the Dr. Oscar, and I will give the word to Andrea and Almos uh, in a minute. I just uh, wanted to add uh, to what Istvan said that uh, I agree that you really need uh, determination to do your PhD, but as a finance professor I can tell you that there are options uh, to exit and change your field and supervisor, so that could help you with the, with the decision. So. No, I would like to ask uh, for our presentation and uh, Andrea. And meanwhile, I can tell that the doctoral school operates in three fields, as you can also see in the name, economics, uh, business and informatics. And uh, the first program by Andrea Ko is the business informatics uh, doctoral program, uh, which focuses on business and informatics. And then we will hear Almos uh, Telegdi talking about uh, the doctoral school of economics uh, but uh, yes okay so maybe we can start uh, the slides so now i give the floor to andrea Ko, head of the doctoral program in business informatics okay <clears throat> okay uh, good morning uh, everyone uh, i'm andrea Ko, uh, the program director of uh, business informatics program uh, the business informatics program has been operating in a very rapidly developing interdisciplinary field since 2009. Several business and economic related uh, research challenges can be examined through advanced ICT solutions. The program is a unique one in Central European region. You have the possibility to deal with interesting research problems related to such innovative fields like artificial intelligence and machine learning application in business or industry, data science, fintech or digitalization. It is worth uh, selecting our program because you can work in an international research team uh, during your studies. Uh, the supervisor has, supervisors have um, a very broad international research uh, network, which is strengthening your international relations as well. 
we have more than 30 uh, supervisors and um, uh, you get effective support uh, for your research work. Our program has two uh, specializations, uh, business data analysis and modeling, which is data science related program and information management and business informatics. Education in the first uh, year is focusing on methodological subjects, while the second year it is extended, it is extended uh, with specialization courses. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. This was in nutshell our program. Thank you. So maybe we can go to this uh, slide. Uh, okay, now we go to the economics uh, doctoral program and I'm telling me. Um, yeah. Okay, hi. So I am the director of the economics doctoral program. I will be very brief because I think it's more important to respond to your questions because all the information can be found on our website. So. The aim of this economics doctoral program is basically to teach students how to carry out how level academic research in economic policy analysis. And what's important probably that we are quite heavy in mathematics and, uh, and statistics. So we teach both formal theory, so formal economic theory and data analysis with modern statistical methods. So what I mean here is mostly that we are trying to establish causal relationships between variables so between important policy variables and uh, and do econometrics. So one example would be, you know, a firm, for example, gets a subsidy. We want to understand what is its effect, but I could bring like many more examples. We have four specializations. So we have macroeconomics, empirical research. So this would be heavy in, in data analysis, which you can use it in many places. We have finance and microeconomic theory. And can you please Move on to the next slide, thank you. So what we can boast of is a great student faculty ratio. So we have many faculty and, uh, and relatively small PhD programs. So you can get the attention you need. Our doctors, we introduced last year a doctoral seminar. So every student every year will present. And then you can get advice, not only from your advisor, but from many experts in your topic. So our doctoral seminar is very popular. So many professors just coming by and, you know, listen to your your topic we don't have high publication requirements we believe that you first you need to do a good dissertation and then and then concentrate on publication so you can concentrate for basically you know throughout your your uh, dissertation time on your on your uh, dissertation and not not doing publications the coursework is important so we just switched this year to to core courses coming from the economic analyst MS, uh, master's program. So if you did the economic analyst master program or something similar, then you can basically switch already to specialization courses and you can save time or put your time already into research and not, uh, and not uh, coursework. And regarding the application, you will not need a research plan, but only a motivation letter, which makes it simpler. And we will have a discussion when you can talk about your about your plans. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, everybody. We are ready to answer to your questions and give the floor to the next program. Thank you so much. So as we mentioned before, if you have questions regarding this doctor school, please, them, please leave them in the comment section and we are going to get back to them during the Q&A session. So now I would like to ask the representative of the Doctoral School of International Relations and Political Science, Dr. Shandor Tulanak, to give his presentation. And I already saw that there is a question uh, whether people need to submit documents in English or Hungarian. So if you can briefly get to that point as well in your presentation that would be lovely thank you thank you very much um very nice i already have the presentation um welcome everyone um i am professor nagy uh, from the department of um, uh, world economy and i'm representing now the doctoral school of international relations and political science uh, here we have uh, four doctoral programs. I will speak a bit um, about all the four programs. First is geopolitics and sustainable development. Second is international relations and security studies, uh, political science, and last but not least, world economics. 
what I would like to speak a bit is which kind of um, research topics or interests uh, we would like to encourage you to apply for one or the other programs. Um, obviously, in the geopolitics um, a doctoral program uh, with geopolitical um, uh, questions, uh, but even um, uh, with other um, um, urban planning and development policy questions and environmental questions, obviously interrelated um, and multidisciplinary uh, questions are all um, uh, welcome. Um, if you are... Um, uh, let's say, not um, 100% sure about your topic, which um, uh, program is um, um, rather relevant for you, then please don't hesitate to contact us before the application, and then we can help you to which program is um, more um, reliable for your topic. Uh, the second program is International Relations and Security Studies. Obviously, here everything which is uh, connected with international relations theories, international conflicts, diplomacy, uh, security uh, studies, and some comparative multidisciplinary international um, uh, questions uh, is uh, treated uh, uh, as well uh, by uh, uh, our colleagues in the Department of um, uh, International Relations. Uh, political science um, is managed by the Department of Political Science, of course, and they are expecting uh, topics about um, uh, public policy, public service, uh, comparative um, uh, political questions and obviously theoretical questions um, uh, as well. Uh, and last, it's um, the World Economics Doctoral Program, uh, where we are doing it together um, uh, with the Department of World Economy and uh, the former Department of Comparative uh, Economics. Uh, so if you have um, um, this kind of uh, uh, comparative institutional economics uh, topics or uh, uh, regional um, uh, studies um, uh, questions, which is uh, rather um, um, economic um, uh, or um, uh, not just purely international uh, uh, relations um, um, topic, then uh, feel free to apply here as well. And obviously, international economics, political economy is all uh, included in um, uh, world economics. Um, obviously, as uh, Professor Konya was telling, um, uh, we expect uh, students who would like to have academic careers um, uh, at the end, and of course, um, uh, with the professional uh, career path as well. Um, we have some former students who are uh, diplomats, uh, some of them who are uh, uh, politicians, uh, some of them who are professors. Uh, actually, most of the uh, professors here at the Department of uh, World Economy and International Relations uh, are coming from our doctoral program in the last um, uh, 25 years, uh, myself included. So obviously, this is one um, uh, career pathway, of course, uh, if you at the end you stuck to this um, um, career path. However, I have to tell you that it's not necessarily the easiest one. It has its beauties, but obviously it's um, uh, not the easiest um, a career to be a professor in uh, uh, Hungary uh, and in general. Uh, requirements. Um, the official language of the doctoral programs in all of the doctoral programs is English. Uh, obviously, uh, we all speak Hungarian, which means that if you have a recommendation letter in Hungarian, we will not expect you to hand in a translation. Uh, but uh, because we would like to judge based on your um, um, academic uh, English uh, knowledge as well. So we would like to ask everyone uh, to hand in uh, the research proposal uh, or the research plan, what you have, including the motivation letter in English. Okay, we will not throw you out if you are handing it in Hungarian, but obviously the official language of uh, teaching um, uh, will be English, so we expect a certain level of uh, uh, the command of the language, and that's why you should prove it uh, by handing in the, the documents, uh, what you are writing for yourself um, in English. It does not mean that if you are handing in your uh, uh, former publications, which probably already you did, or uh, uh, the OTDK a paper, what you were presenting, or any kind of uh, written um, a proof of your academic skills, it could be in Hungarian. Of course, we don't expect to translate it. I hope that I'm responding this um, a question in the comments. Um, obviously, we are expecting you a kind of um, independence. Um, 
bigger independence that probably you are used to in uh, uh, bachelor or master uh, times. And um, uh, from the first uh, moment, I mean that when you are entering the, the PhD uh, studies, you will be thrown into deep water sometimes. So you have to uh, lead the seminars, help the professors uh, from the first uh, week when you are here, which means that you will be a kind of teaching assistant uh, uh, to your supervisor possibly as well, uh, which means that you have to teach until a certain level. Uh, so you have to have to manage um, uh, normally bachelor students, uh, manage your own time. Uh, the supervisor will not parenting you, which means that you have to uh, advance and manage your time and doing independent research. Uh, however, all the supervisors are trying to help, but they are not doing the works for you. And um, obviously, if you are doing it next to a partial or full time job, um, you have to be prepared that it will require a certain level of compromises from your boss, from your family, from your um, uh, free time. Um, I have to say that uh, several students of mine uh, who have uh, children and um, uh, they are married, uh, they managed to, to finish the PhD, but um, it was not an easy ride, none of them. When you have a, a deadline, when you have to fulfill or you will be kicked out because uh, um, the regulation of the state or the Corvinus regulation states that this is your last time. We cannot go against the Hungarian um, uh, higher education uh, law, which means that if you are not finishing, then you are out of the program. Uh, and this means sleepless nights uh, and probably, um, you know, you have to take some uh, pause from your job if you want to finish uh, in time. So time management and independence um, uh, and obviously dedication to uh, the academics uh, is very important. And um, but obviously I would like to encourage everyone um, uh, to at least try it because uh, it can be a be beautiful career as well and uh, uh, full of um, uh, successes. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for this presentation as well. Now we are going to move on to our final presentation about the Doctoral School of Sociology and Communication Studies. So I would like to ask Dr. Zhuzhana Alakesh to hold this presentation. Thank you very much. Good morning. And I would like to welcome everybody on behalf of the Doctoral School of Sociology and Communication Science. I am Susanna Alakesh and the head of this doctoral school. And I would like to introduce you our two program directors. They are not here, but they play a very important role on our training, Rika Bentes and Tomas Bartos. And how can I move on my slide? Yeah, fine, thank you. Uh, I, I would like to tell you only two sentences about the history of our doctoral school. In this form, it was set up in 2020, in 2020 from the former doctoral school of sociology and the former doctoral school of communication science. Both programs or both former doctoral schools are unique in a certain way. The sociology doctoral school started its operation 30 years ago, and this was the first in Hungary. And communication doctoral school was set up in 2011, and it was the first. And until today, this is the only doctoral program of communication. And this new doctoral school preserves the traditions and values of, of the founder schools. Would lie maybe here. Okay, I found the solution. So in both programs, there is a very strong focus on supporting the doctoral research, and we are preparing our students for an academic career and for the international labor market. Our aim is to assist motivated students to carry out problem-oriented, theoretically grounded and method methodologically sound and empirical, empirical research. So each of our courses focus on developing research skills. Uh, you will have 
supervisors and supervisors play a crucial role in your training. We try to find the best experts of your research interest. And we also like also support if they give you the possibility of being involved in the research programs. And that happens regularly. Many of our PhD students participate in research projects of the supervisors. I wrote up some, some of our research topic, some of our research topics. We, we have announced really a broad range of research topics. Some example, um, economic and cultural elites, computational social science, robotics, gender, risk behavior, digitalization, social media, media and, and many others. I can't see my last sentence, but we also accept topics you are interested in, and we try to find the best supervisor for your special topic, if you like. Um, as we are preparing our students for international academic life, as all other doctoral schools at Corvinus, we also strongly support conference participation, summer schools, and any other activities where you can join in, in the join in the international academic life. I wrote up some examples and countries where our former students are working actually. You can find our former st students in USC, Sweden, the Netherlands, in Czechia, and naturally in many Hungarian universities and, and research centers too. So finally, why to come here? You will find a really supportive academic environment. You will find a good atmosphere here. I try to illustrate it with this Christmas party's picture where you can find, you can see our staff, some of our staff members and some of our PhD students. Uh, you will find a really promising perspective and you will find a nice surrounding. Here you can see an example of the surrounding behind me from, our, from my background picture. And I have one more slide I try to prepare for you a montage about our really vibrant academic, international academic life. Here you can see summer school, summer schools, uh, publications, international conferences, uh, fellowships, uh, different applications, our students presenting papers, and many other interesting scientific activities. Uh, finally, finally, thank you very much for your attention. And I hope very much that we can see at least some of you in September in our doctoral programs. Thank you. Thank you so much for this presentation too. It was lovely to hear it, especially me coming from this doctoral school. So right now we are going to proceed with the Q&A uh, session, which means that uh, as long as you have some questions in the comment section, then we are going to answer them. And whenever we run out of those, we are going to close this session. So this, uh, this is a great time to answer them. For that, uh, we are going to all join um, with our screen. So we are all, all trying to answer these to our best knowledge. So let me just quickly go over. I think the first question about whether you should uh, actually submit your documents in English or Hungarian, we already answered that it should be English, of course, because that would be the working language of, uh, of the doctoral program. And then the second question is uh, about looking for teaching plus junior researcher research assistant opportunities. Well, in this question, Nino, you highlighted the Institute of Media and Marketing Communications, but I think this could be really relevant for actually every, every doctoral school. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, everyone uh, who wants to give, give a view on this question 
to to say something but as as a phd student i can say that about teaching you definitely have the opportunity in my opinion and i'm also from the institute it's really good if you express this uh, on your oral exam so try to say that you are interested in teaching try to say that you are also interested in for example junior research opportunities because the more people the more the professors know the easier they can give you those opportunities so make sure that you that you highlight that um i myself have been teaching from the very first semester of my PhD every semester I've been teaching so definitely you can have that and there's multiple research institutes at Corvinus where you can probably find find something that would be interesting for you and don't forget that maybe you can also proceed with something as an experience abroad so for example I'm also going to uh, going to an exchange uh, next year at a research institute in Iceland so that could also be interesting for you and now if anyone has something to say please please go ahead any of the doctoral schools that that could add something if you yeah. don't mind uh, there is a question regarding um, how to um, choose a consultant from any kind of list. Uh, so I would like to um, um, highlight that normally you are not choosing a supervisor, not necessarily choosing a supervisor, you are choosing a topic. Obviously, if, I or if you already know uh, some professor uh, who is the expert of that topic, you may um, uh, approach uh, her or him ask for um, the help of doing um, a research proposal, etc., etc., and she or he may be your future supervisor. But normally the, the program directors uh, together in a council, they are deciding who could be the perfect um, uh, supervisor with you. And obviously this is uh, not um, a, like a direct comment that it has to be used. So we're always doing consultations with the students and with uh, the professors as well. But if you don't know know at the moment when you are applying who should be your prof supervisor it's not a problem so you don't have to search any list on the internet to choose one from thank you thank you for the answer um we jumped a little bit forward with the questions uh, yeah i see i see this question too so i think you know if if the answer was sufficient about research and um, teaching opportunities then we are going to move on with that and yes definitely there was this question about a list of uh, consultants yes i can actually um stand by this what what uh, we just heard that i also had a preliminary um consultant first and then once i entered the phd program i was given another one for the simple reason that together with another phd student we could form a research group so actually it was a it was a great choice my first choice was also great but my second was maybe even more fitting so so yes, um, I want to ask you now that we are with this question about consultants, is there anyone from the doctoral schools that would like to add something on this? And if no, we're gonna move on to the next one. Good, good. If no, then the next question is whether there is any other grants that could be available for students not from the Eurozone. This is the question of Fanele. So here um, I would like to ask probably Zsuzsa Krista who could uh, answer this, whether there's any, any other grants from people not from the Eurozone. Yes, uh, I could uh, suggest the uh, Stipendium Ungaricum Scholarship, uh, which is unfortunately over this year because uh, um, usually the application deadline is mid-January. But uh, besides the Stipendium Ungaricum, I couldn't suggest any other possibility for research grants. So I advise to um, visit the Stipendium Ungaricum um, webpage uh, for all the other information. Great. Yes, Stipendium Hungaricum is one of the most popular um, like research and in general educational grants when people come to Hungary. So I also highly suggest to check it out. 
All right, so we have seen these questions. Now we are going to move uh, to this other question from Frank. Uh, I'm going to read it out loud because it, it, I haven't seen it before. I am a master's student from economics analysis program and I am applying our doctoral program in direction of media and communication science for autumn semester in 2023. Currently, I had sent my application by finishing the online forum that was supported by Corbin's official website. Also, I had received the information email that informed me that I had successfully submit my personal application. My quick question is, do I need to do anything else about the application process before the interview? So basically, you have submitted your application, you received the email that your application was received, and the question is whether you need to do anything. The natural answer that comes to my mind is no. What you need to do is wait until the application period is over. But Juja, if you have any other suggestions, please please let me know. No, you, you told it correctly. So <clears throat> the applicants do not need anything. Uh, we will contact them by email about the um, interview. So until that uh, moment, they do not uh, they should do, shouldn't do anything else exactly i know it's difficult to wait but but it's going to be worth it and if you got the email that your application was received i'm sure that everything is going well all right thank you this the next question is do we apply to the scholarships as part of the phd application or separately so as much as i know it's at the same time or at least it was like that but for example for for the scholarship, the doctoral scholarship, you need to state um, like a, a certificate of excellence. I think this is how we call it. Uh, please uh, let me know if I'm calling it the right way. So it's one extra document, definitely, but it's submitted at the same time. Yeah, it, it's document only for the Corvinus Doctoral Scholarship, not for the state scholarship. Um, in your application, uh, you should um, <clears throat> indicate that uh, which uh, one do you uh, apply. Uh, so uh, if you apply for the state scholarship, uh, then you do not need this uh, kind of certificate of excellence. But if you apply for the um, COVID doctoral scholarship, uh, you do need to upload this uh, document as well. Great, yes, exactly how I remembered it. Good. So the next question is actually towards the doctoral school of business and management. So Adrian asks whether, like how to prepare for the required exam at the doctoral school of business and management. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So uh, we, uh, the admission has two i mean the selection has two rounds first of all there are uh, a written part of the exam and there is an oral part of the exam an admission test and uh, you may see on the home page that uh, the written part has, um, consists on a logical test a, a quantitative methodology test a qualitative methodology test and you should write an essay as well. Uh, anyway, I would say that the time for preparation from now, it should be enough to prepare for the exam. So what we are generally looking for is just to show that you are able to uh, analyze and um, analyze questions, you're able to formulate questions and answers, and we would like to know how do you apply general techniques of, of quantitative and qualitative methodologies. Uh, uh, these also suggest books in Hungarian and in English on the homepage, and uh, we also uh, uh, require a research proposal, which could be a demonstrative proposal in the sense that Usually the students can change their mind and can be more precise uh, thesis research proposal later on, but it demonstrates your ability to capture a topic and, and, and the maturity of your thinking. And at the end, uh, there is an oral exam for 
for just uh, talking about your motivation and and uh, uh, getting a clearer picture about about the way what you would like to do so in general i would say that uh, you should consider these books they are usually bachelor level uh, books and you just need to refresh your analytic skills and it should be enough uh, and please bear aware that the written exam will be on moodle and you need to be, be able to handle it i think this is in nutshell thank you Anila. thank you thank you so much i hope this answer was sufficient if no please leave a leave a comment and we can get back to it uh, the next question is um i started watching late in process of your presentation is there a possibility to get the information in other ways yes absolutely so this recording will be saved and you can watch it back i believe it's on the youtube channel of the university but definitely just check back to to the website as well where you found this link and you can definitely watch it back also um if you need more detailed information about the admission processes and in general about the doctoral schools just visit the website of corvinus so if you go to corvinus and you go to admissions you can find general information about everything like in general the doctoral school uh, admission procedures but you can also go to the websites of the individual doctoral schools and then you can find some more detailed information so definitely you can you can watch it back um we have a next question um when do lectures usually take place in the first two years so here i think maybe we could have an answer from all of the doctoral schools because i'm i'm not aware of the other ones uh, except for mine i know that for the communication science uh, doctoral program um we had in the first year every monday a class and in the second year basically in general we had a class every week but not always at the same time so for coming to university at least you need to spend let's say half a day um, make sure that you calculate with that but it could be different with the other doctoral schools so so i would like to ask everyone to 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 give a short answer to that shall we maybe start first with uh, the doctoral school of business and management again how is it for you? Do you when are, when are the classes in the first two years usually? Sorry, can I be the last one at this question? You yes, know, I would yes, like yes. to share a link for the last question I got to show totally. the Okay, so that's I would like to finish it and, and I yes like yes of course. Uh, shall we then move on to the doctoral school of economics, business, and informatics? How are the classes for your first two years? Yes, and I give the floor to the program directors because it's program specific. So, Andrea, please go ahead. Yes, I, I start. Uh, in our program, uh, there are intensive days. Uh, this year it was on Thursdays and uh, on Fridays. Uh, and uh, we have no lectures every week. Um, so, in every second week, about we have these intensive days. Thank you, Almos. So in our pro in the economics doctoral program we have so the first first semester is together with the master students so that's pretty heavy so basically there are like two or three days of courses but if you did already them or you did something equivalent you can skip those so we would we would uh, sign for that so you don't have to do it later on you have specialization courses we don't see yet when it will be but it will be you know first year you will have quite heavy coursework later on much less. Okay, thank you so much. Um, shall we move on to the Doctoral School of International Relations and Political Science? Uh, I have to tell you that the classes are quite uh, random in a sense that some professors are doing um, weekly classes, uh, others are bi-weekly and some are doing it like in blocks. Um, so I cannot tell you which day will be occupied um, and I cannot even tell you that the classes will be just in the afternoon on early night. Uh, so it can be actually uh, any moment in the, in the working day when you will have classes. So in this sense, I cannot give you much of a direction. Thank you. Um, 
Yes, thank you, Shoshana. You can tell about uh, sociology and communication. Yes. I am the last one. And as we are in the same doctoral school, it is very similar for sociology program as for communication program. We always have classes on Monday, practically every Monday and let's say half a day. So it, it, is, it is a very exact time that must be free on Monday, every week, every semester. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And shall we go now back to the Doctoral School of Business and Management? Thank you, thank you so much. So first, we also have uh, some flexibility on, on uh, regarding the time of the classes. Uh, in general, the specialization courses could be under uh, um, negotiation. So uh, I know students who can who can make it uh, uh, as a part-time student. Uh, and what I have to highlight that we also have, uh, and the first year we also have uh, uh, methodology courses, which are compulsory courses and we also have put focus on them and uh, these are more strict in the time settings as well uh, but later on when you are in a specialization and you have uh, uh, less uh, kind of variety of courses then then you can you can make this easier so um, i in the uh, looking back in the history of the doctoral schools, there is an, usually it's not, not not a problem to appear uh, uh, in the in the courses to the students, and they can they can uh, manage it. So this is my answer. Thank you so much. I hope this was sufficient. So whichever doctoral school you're interested in, try to save this information in your heads. The next question is, if someone is doing a TEDECA or is a demonstrator in this semester, and there may be a publication slash case study related to this, can they provide a confirmation later? Or only what is already available at the time of application will be taken into consideration? So. For those that don't know, TEDECA is a Hungarian student scientific research competition. So, um, it's a difficult question for me a little bit because I would say that you can, of course, upload any given certification that you already have. So it's a bit difficult to say how you could use them if, for example, if you get them in like June or July. I would say if you don't have these kind of certifications yet, you can definitely mention on your interview, for example, that you've been working as a demonstrator. So that would be great. Please, uh, Jose, if you can um, say say something about that, but I believe you can only use the certifications that you have at the time of the application. Yes, and uh, you were right. If uh, something happens between the application deadline and the interview, then uh, <clears throat> In everybody, and anyone can mention it at the interview. And uh, I guess it's a doctoral school specific question if they accepted it or not, but uh, it was to mention it uh, anyway. Yes, I think so too. Just make sure that you refer to it. These are yeah. great experiences. And I know sometimes the deadlines do not match, for example, the, the TEDECA uh, day. So just make sure that you mention it. Okay, so here we have, if it is Erko Cibizonitvan, it is a certificate, certificate of good conduct. I'm not sure whether this is a question, but yeah, definitely, I think that's how we say it in English. I can see some other notes from Corvinus University for some additional information about the application period. And yeah, here I can see, is the certificate of good conduct necessary for the application? Uh, I think that's a question again to you, Suja. Is it? Um, no, I don't think that we have asked for the <laughs> certificate of good conduct. So I really don't know <laughs> uh, no. why is this question is here. You know, maybe maybe because um, I'm thinking about that for teaching. If you are teaching classes, usually yeah. it is asked. But as I also know, not for the application. No, not for the application. I'm quite sure about it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, and we have another question. Where are the curricula of doctoral schools accessible? So here, um, 
if you if you have the curricula uh, online, please please let me know and let let the let the viewers know. And anyone from the doctoral schools uh, could tell me wh whether they have their curriculum online. So basically, like the outline of the program, what kind of classes will be taught? Is that is that online for any of the doctoral schools? I actually, I actually, I'm not sure that the curriculum as it is is online. So usually the syllabus is online for certain classes, but the curriculum itself could be, you know, could be tangible before before the academic year. So so I believe they might not be online or may, they might not be available for external users. But if any of the representatives of the doctoral schools think otherwise, please let me know. But otherwise, I think this is the answer. Please make sure that you that you in general look around on the websites of the doctoral school. Maybe you can have a little bit of information on that or maybe ask uh, students that are already in the doctoral program if you want to get some more information about the classes. OK, um, let's just see. Please take like um, 10, 15 seconds. If you have any other questions, then uh, then we can still answer. So otherwise, if you don't have anything else, just to sum up, you can look back this presentation, this whole uh, event online. So if you miss anything, please do not hesitate to check back. If you need more information about the specific doctoral programs, make sure that you visit their websites. If you if you need even more answers, then don't hesitate to, to reach out to the representatives or in general to the offices. And if you need any advice from a, a PhD student, okay, I cannot help it much with your applications and anything but if you have more questions that you feel like about I don't know student life or challenges and um, beautiful things about PhD you can also reach out to me so I can see that there's no more questions so I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, yes have a great day and we can I think close this session thank you for everybody for your participation thank you Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.